what are the different types of photography lighting? Well, there's basically three types of lighting. Most people are afraid of two of them and limit themselves to only using the third one. So stick around till the end to make sure you don't fall into this trap. It's showtime. Hi, I'm Mike Lloyd. I run a multi six figure boudoir studio in Silicon Valley, California. And we're gonna chat about lighting, particularly the three types of lights that you can use during a photo shoot. So, the five things we're going to chat about today what are you trying to achieve with your light source? Adding versus subtracting light, constant lights, flash, and natural light. So, firstly, what are you trying to achieve with a light? Before you decide whether you should get some fancy strobes or use a speed light or use the sun or use whatever, what are you trying to do with it? Is it ambient light? Do you just want the room to be more well lit? Do you want a rim light? Do you want highlights down the side of your subject to separate them from the background? Or are they key lights like these two big ones here so that you can in theory, flatter your subject, make them look good from the camera's point of view. So knowing what you want to do with your lights will help you determine what kind of light you should actually use. Because sometimes it's better to use a flash, sometimes you can rely on the ambient light or the natural light in the room or outdoors, sometimes you can use both. So knowing what the purpose of the light source is, that will tell you what you should use. Next. Do you want to add light or subtract light? Most photographers think about adding lights to a scene to control it, but you can also remove light from the scene. Different ways we can do that. Either speeding up your shutter to make the ambient light uh, appear darker in the photo. So, you know, if you speed your shutter up enough outside, you can make daytime look like nighttime. So that's one way that we can essentially remove light from the scene. Technically, we're underexposing to control it. We're basically removing the light. Or you can actually block light. So you can put up things, whether it's a gobo to control light spilling from your light sources, your flash, your strobes, whatever. Or it can be a flag, which is a thing that, again, hangs in front of your light source that will cast shadows. V-flats are great for this. You're basically putting up an object between your subject and a light source so that light source no longer lands on your subject or no longer lands on the background or something. You're blocking light from coming into the scene. So that can be just as powerful a tool as adding light to a scene. So if you've got a big window or... There's a building outside that has blue walls, and it's casting a blue reflection. Uh, it's giving a blue color cast onto your subject, and you don't want them to look blue because they're not a Smurf. You can put up something between that wall and your subject to stop the blue light from coming in, and then you no longer have a Smurf shoot. So that's a way that you can control light by removing it from the scene. Now let's talk about adding light to the scene. The one light source that everyone claims to be uh, in control of when they first get started is natural light. Most photographers in the beginning say they're a natural light photographer because they don't know how to use strobes and flash. And if you say, oh no, I only believe in natural light, then it makes it sound like you know what you're doing. You bunch of losers! But we all know that really it's because you don't know how to light yet, which is fine. Uh, no one knew how to do any of this before we practiced and learned. So just can you give me the basics rather than lying and say, no, I don't do those things. They're not for me. Learn how to do them so that you can control your light and produce high quality photo shoots every single time. Because when I travel with my strobes, shooting indoors or out makes no difference. I know I'm always going to get great light. If I plan for an outdoor shoot and it's sunny and I wanted clouds, or it's cloudy and I wanted sunshine, I don't have to worry about that because I can control my camera for the ambient exposure, uh, which is the natural light happening in the scene, and then I can put flashes up and light my subject, main lights, rim lights, things like that, and make them look amazing every time, anywhere, any time of day. So learning how to use these other light sources is going to allow you to create consistent work. 
Should you learn natural light? Yes, you absolutely should learn how to use natural light because all we're really doing with flashes or constant lights like this is recreating natural light. You know, if you look at old portraits, for example, Vermeer or Van Gogh was fantastic with this. They made it look like their subjects were next to a window in all their paintings. And so you had this beautiful window light on their subject. That's what we generally try to create in portraits is window light flattering our subject. It could be daylight or it could be moonlight because sometimes moonlight coming in through a window creates this really dark, whimsical, magical photo. Uh, or chiaroscuro, which is my favorite lighting style. Basically, candles and lamps 400 years ago, that's what everything looked like in the room. Uh, and so we can use styles like that with natural light, with candles and lamps, or we can recreate that with strobes or constant lights. But learning how natural light behaves, it's what's going to teach you how to create it artificially. So if you're going to be a natural light photographer, amazing. But actually learn lighting with natural light. Don't just say you are as a way to avoid the scary stuff, which really isn't that scary. Okay, so what about the other types of lights? Artificial light, we call it. Even though... Light photons are light photons, regardless of where they come from. Natural light comes from the sun. Everything else we call artificial. So should you go with constant lights or should you go with a flash? There's pros and cons to both. Obviously, for a video, constant lights are the way to go. Otherwise, you'd have strobes going off. It would look like a dance party and it'd be really distracting for anybody watching the video. Constant lights are... Great, because as soon as you set them up, you can see exactly what the photo is going to look like. So that's cool. It's a reason some photographers prefer that. Also cool for headshots. You know, Peter Hurley has Kino flows. That was his jam. He loves that, and that's cool. There are downsides to constant lights, though. And to me, these are total deal breakers. One of them, they're never going to be as powerful as a flash. You're never going to be able to get as much light out of constant lights as you will from a flash. And that's a big deal if you want to shoot, you know, at F8. These little guys not going to work at F8 without losing everything else in the room also or jacking up your ISO. And then you get grainy images. Not ideal. And if you want to bring these outside in the daylight, they're not going to overpower the sun. Whereas my flash units, the uh, Flashpoint Explorer 600s, or you can use the Godox 600s or Profoto B1s, any of those are going to overpower the sun. So you can use them outside in the daylight and really control your light. Another reason I don't like using constant lights, when you turn them up bright enough to properly light your subject, we'll say, your clients are going to end up squinting because there are really bright lights in their face all the time. And that's just really uncomfortable. It's like in the old days when we used to go outside and someone would take the family photo and everyone would have to look at the, at the sun, you know, have the photographers back to the sun. And we're all like, one, two, three. And we'd all look surprised because we're squinting, trying not to look at the sun and keep our eyes open at the same time. And we don't want to do that. Flashes are better for that because it allows people to keep a comfortable, more natural look on their face the whole time, and the flash isn't going to make them squinty. So, constant lights are cool. Other than that, it's perfect. Just perfect. For some situations, they're great for ambient light if you just want to light the room with them, but to actually light your subject, I'm going to get into the next point, which is using flash. So which flash units should you use? There are different kinds. Uh, basically, three different options for you. A speed light, which is basically an on-camera flash. It could be built into your camera, or it could just stand up on the top, and they kind of pop up and down. Some of them turn sideways. But it's, it's the small flash unit that sits on top of your camera's hot shoe. Uh, Canon called them a speed light. Everyone just calls them that now, even though that's not technically their name, but they're small. They recycle really fast, which means the duration or the, the time between flashes is really fast. You can just take photos as fast as you can click the button. It's going to be ready to pop that flash every single time. 
However, it's a small light source, and they're not very powerful. So if you want to fill a huge umbrella to get just gorgeous, soft light, it's going to be really hard to do that with a speed light. Now, they do make these brackets where you can mount multiple speed lights into one softbox. But at that point, if you're going to spend that kind of money on multiple speed lights, you might as well just get one regular size strobe. Again, I use the Flashpoint, the Explorer 600s. The Godox ones are great also. They're literally the same product, just a different casing because one is sold through Adorama, one is sold through B&H. I love them because they are, uh, you can turn them down enough to light in a totally dark room and not blow things out. You can also turn them up, go outside, totally overpower the sun, and turn daytime into nighttime. Very, very versatile. They're also like 500 bucks. They're really inexpensive for what you get. They have stroboscopic, which means you can click the flash button or the shutter release really quickly, take a ton of photos really fast, like a strobe. Um, They have high-speed sync, so you can shoot outside with a fast shutter speed and not have to worry about clipping, which is a whole other topic of conversation. I don't want to get too technical with the lighting uh, details here, but essentially the flash is going to give you more versatility, more power, also more options for light modifiers. So that's the different shaped softboxes, the sizes of softbox, whether it's going to be a snoot or you want to use an umbrella or you want to put like literally any light modifier. That's the thing that goes on the outside of the light that helps us shape the light. They're all made for flashes. Not many of them are made for constant lights. So we also get more control with the shape of our light, the hardness of our light and the spread of our light when we use a flash unit. Flash units don't get hot because it's just a quick flash from the bulb. So you can put gels on them. You can do other more creative things. If you're running LED lights, like these constant ones, that's cool too. They're not going to get too hot and melt your soft boxes. But again, you won't get the power. So I always just recommend going with flashes. And the the biggest hangup that we get is I don't know what I'm going to get until I take the photo. And I will say that is only going to be the case for you until you just practice and learn your gear. I can set up my lights, three lights set up in a room, adjust all of my settings before I've ever taken a photo, and I know exactly what it's going to look like. I could open up all brand new equipment out of the box, not even considering any settings I'd previously set. And I can put everything where I need it to go, adjust all of my settings, and be like 95% the way to the finished product. But that's because I've done it a ton of times. Like, tens of thousands of photos. So it's really easy for me to do that because I put the time in and you'll get there as well. And you'll find that when you put your softbox here and it's at a certain power setting, it's going to look a certain way. And then you develop your style and you realize I don't need to have every single lighting setup and setting coordination uh, memorized because I'm really only going to use the same few settings anyway. So you get your style, you learn how to use your tools, and it gets really, really easy. I promise. So there you go. Five points we talked about today. What kind of lighting should you choose? Firstly, what do you want to do with your light? What is the purpose of adding or removing the light? Second, are you going to add light or are you going to remove the light? That's important though too. And then the three types of lighting, natural light, which is great to know, but Please don't stop there. Constant lights, they can be really great, but it's not your best friend. And then flash, this is what's going to make you a pro photographer taking amazing, consistent photos, no matter what your environment is like. So there you go. To learn more about lighting, definitely watch the other videos. I've got more thorough deep dives into what kind of equipment you should use, how to use the equipment, different lighting setups. I got you covered. So until next time, see you then. (laughs) 